Did you ever spend a few minutes to analyze and fix a bug in your source code and then it took you another few hours to adapt the failing unit tests? Here are two basic rules every test case must follow to be understandable and so maintainable and changeable. And these rules are don't assert what you haven't arranged and avoid any noise possible. Let's look at a simple example. So this is a test case from the VS Project Converter project we looked at in the previous video, which was about converting from legacy Visual Studio project formats to the new SDK style projects. This particular test case is about one specific aspect, which is removing code files which were previously not mentioned in the projects and which can so be considered as dead code and have to be removed from the file system now, otherwise they would be included in the project again automatically. Having a closer look at this test case, I wonder why A and B should actually be kept while C and D should be removed. So here rule number one comes into picture. Don't assert what you haven't arranged. What does that mean? Every test case can be split into three basic parts. Arrange, act and assert. Whatever we verify in the assert part, whether this is some result data or some side effect like calling an API on a mock, the reader of the test case need to be able to relate to the setup in the arrange part. It should be kind of obvious why the assert expects that particular result or that particular API call looking at the setup in the arrange part. So let's apply rule number one and improve this test. The problem here is that we don't see how the Visual Studio project is actually set up. Looking at the test case, we cannot see which files were part of the project and which not. Looking around the test case, we realize that this setup is in the setup method of the test fixture. This makes reuse easy, but hides the important information we need to be able to understand what the test case is asserting on. One obvious solution would be to take this whole code here and copy it into each and every test case. Obviously, this is not a nice solution. A better option would be to extract that code and put it into a factory method and pass all the relevant information to it. So let's do this. We take this code and create a new factory method. Private X element, create CS project, and just paste the code here and return. Okay, what are the relevant information? The relevant information are the code files which are part of the project. So let's take those as input parameters. I read only collection, string, code files. Let's comment this out for a moment and generate this XML snippet here from the arguments we got. So code files dot select x and now let's copy this part over here and say this is a compile and just add the file at the end one more bracket and a comma after having done that we realize that we actually don't need this member and the setup method at all now let's fix the test cases so we have here the file system now let's set up the project var cs project create CS project and the files are in this case a.cs and b.cs and we realize that going with the params params argument here is even more convenient okay we have to put this first copy it here And let's do the same for the second test case. And here we have to pass impl x and nothing else, just escaping. And of course, we have to use this project here. Simple. Now, if we look at our test case again, we can easily relate from the asserted data to the arranged data and understand that, okay, A and B have to be kept because they were part of the project initially and C and D are in the file system, but they are not part of the project. So now with having all the data we assert on being visible directly in the arranged part, the whole test case becomes very easily readable and understandable.
But there's more. Looking at the test case again, I wonder why do we actually have this user file here and the solution? Is this relevant for the test case? And what about this assert? Is that relevant? And now rule number two comes into the picture. Avoid any noise possible. What does that mean? When you have any other data, variables or mocks in your test cases, which are not really mandatory to understand the test case or to make it pass, then this would just confuse the reader. This is especially true for the arrange part. Every reader of the code would always wonder, is this really necessary? And in most cases, because of doubts, it would just be kept in the code, which doesn't make the code better. The obvious solution here is simply remove it. The same applies to unnecessary asserts. As a rule of thumb, let's have only one logical assert per test case. So let's remove this one as well. If the code cannot be easily removed, hide it in some factory methods like this one. Now the whole test case is much more understandable and so maintainable and changeable. These rules do not only apply to unit tests. These are test cases from a tool called DocBot, which is used to generate documentation from source code. These test cases are pretty high level acceptance tests. One common problem of such test cases we can find in the arrange part. The data which is used is often not directly in the code, but is referenced from some external data source. This makes the test case pretty hard to understand. If we look at the assert part, we have basically no idea why this test case is named like that and where this description is coming from. If we find some way to include the data directly into the test case, the test case becomes much more understandable. Now we can easily relate where this test case name is coming from and even where the description is coming from. Now it might not be always possible to include the whole data into the test case directly. One alternative could be to work with templates. So we could read some template data from some external data source and then directly in the test case set up the key properties in the arrange part of every test case. Let's look at one more example. Do you remember the email feature from one of the previous videos about implementing the clean architecture? This is one of its test cases. If we go through the test case and try to understand it, we see that there are some test cases which fail, for which there is already a defect, and so finally some email is sent. But if we look closer, we realize that there is quite some noise inside. For example, let's look at this test execution environment. Is it actually relevant? Doesn't seem to be the case. So let's remove it. And why do we actually use two test cases here which fail? Wouldn't be one enough? Let's remove one. This one, this one. The scenario would still make sense, right? And why do we actually assert on the build number and the sender email address? Also, this is not really relevant for the scenario. So let's remove this as well. Now the test case is much shorter. Let's go through it again and see whether it's easier to understand. So there's a CI CD pipeline build there's something failing for which there's already a defect and then we send an email. Much more clear because all the noise is gone. The purpose of tests is not only to find and avoid bugs. Tests should also act as an executable documentation and as such tests need to be easy to understand. Furthermore, software is expected to be soft, means changeable. This is true for automated test cases as well. So follow rule number one and rule number two for understandable, maintainable and changeable tests. See you in the next video.